See what we got. Oh, all right. Get a little fair use going. Got something running in the background real quick. Hold on. All right. Zoom is uh, running back run. Shout out to everybody in chat joining us. We're going to get started pretty soon. Yep, just waiting on this Zoom. Got my, got my Zoom running in the background. As soon as it responds, stop that. All these pieces together. Let's see. Here we go. All right, y'all, bear with us for a moment. Definitely shout out to everybody in the chat. Peace for rocking with us, getting everything started on this back end. East Mac fam, salute, salute. Bear with us one moment, we're going to get started.
Okay, mic check, mic check. Good to go. All right, let's go ahead and get the show on the road. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Had a little technical difficulty. All right, let's see if we can get this thing going. All right, good we'll to go. Uh, all right, well, hello and welcome to the Lost Confederacy channel. This is week four of the 13 week fiscal program for American prisoners of war. Today, you have myself, Chief Biko, as well as Chief Alligator. And here, as always, we focus uh, more so on that first letter in the acronym APOW, which is American. Uh, before we get started today, as always, going to play some music to let the chat build up. Again, had some technical difficulties. But uh, this first song that we're going to be playing, as again, we let the chat build uh, before we jump into our continued readings of the COINTEL Pro. Definitely want y'all to pay attention to this. This is uh, going to be a song by Jason Aldean. Um, and I believe the song is called Try That in a Small Town. Um, so this is coming straight from a redneck. And he basically is just calling us out in regards to pulling any of this, quote unquote, what people may call wokeness or um, rebelling from our status as prisoner of war in his small town. So without further ado, go ahead and play these songs um, and then we'll jump into our readings for today. Yeah, fair use on it, fair use on it as well. Correct, correct, fair use on both of these songs that we'll be playing as we let the chat build. Sidewalk, carjacking old lady at a red light. Pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store. You think it's cool, act a fool if you like. Cuss out a cop, spit in his face. Stomp on the flag and light it up. Yeah, you think it's tough. Well, try that in a small town. See how far you make it down. My granddad gave me They say one day They're gonna round up Well that shit might fly in the city Good luck Try that in a small town See how far you make it down the road Around here we take care of our own You cross that line It won't take long for you to find out I recommend you don't Up right. If you're looking for a 
farmers are dropping their own crops for the day. A friend is in need and they've come to help. It's what this community and a lot of our communities stand for. Somebody needs some help, you'll get it. What's up, homie? Uh, why you just sitting here looking up in the sky? Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. 
That's right. Wait on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you ain't gonna do nothing with your life but sit here and wait for Jesus to fall out the sky? That's right. All right, Dad. Shout out to Ice Cube one time for Ice Cube and the Redneck. I ain't got no problems with that Redneck coming straight up the middle with it. Um, so once again, <clears throat> where we at? Week five or week four, Chief Biko? Week four. Week four. Week four. So if y'all know by now, we, uh, we're in alignment with the world as far as business is concerned. The world operates on fiscal quarters. So July, July 1st started the third fiscal quarter. So what, one of the things we show on this channel is that the United States government is in the business of fucking over the American. All right. So what I want to do real quick is give a crash course via proof of claim why it looks like we're right when we just cite to documents or cite to events that happen within an individual fiscal quarter, whether it's an Ohio cop shooting the guy 60 times or whether it's a Buffalo shooting or whether it's Kanye getting stripped in front of us for saying the word Jew, you know, we're not, we're not doom and gloom. We're just in alignment with business. The United States government is in the business of fucking over one particular group of people. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. And what I want to do, and we've done this before, but I think it's necessary for us to continue to do this because repetition is the key to learning. <clears throat> it may seem redundant to some people, but it's, it's, it's needed for where we are right now. So what I have up here on the screen is the 1964 Civil Rights Act. And the reason why this is important is because if you have family that was here during what we know as Jim Crow or segregation, this is part of your history. You need to know <clears throat> what happened to your group of people. So right above Title I on this document, the 1964 Civil Rights Act, and if you want to I don't know if you have the link to put it in the chat real quick or, okay. I'm not gonna be on it long. I just wanna touch on something real quick. So right above title one, can you see this document on the screen, Chief Biko? Yep, good to go. Okay, so right above title one, it says, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America and Congress assembled. So what we're saying on this, no, what we're proving, we're not saying anything. What we're proving is we have never been defined through the House and the Senate by this government, okay? So in 1964, this particular act came through the House and the Senate and it was signed by Lyndon Baines Johnson. All I wanna do is just scroll down here real quick to Title II under this Civil Rights Act. Because we have a bad, we have a, we got the strongest chin on planet Earth as a group of people. Uh, we just can't get knocked out. <clears throat> but both eyes closed, teeth missing. I mean, we, we've been taking a beating for a while. So under Title II in the 1964 Civil Rights Act, it says injunction relief against discrimination in places of public accommodation. That is a very fancy way of saying we're going to end Jim Crow. We're going to end segregation. There was a certain group of people on this land that could not go anywhere they wanted to go. If you went into the wrong restaurant or the wrong area, you could be killed. That ties right in to the song that the media decided to promote this week. The song's been out since May. But remember, we're an act of war, so propaganda is their offensive mechanism. So at the same day that the state of Florida Board of Education decided to change the military brainwashing starting up this coming up school year to teach kids that there was benefits in being slaves, that same exact day, the media then decides to 
promote this song about try that in a small town. What you need to know as the American is that links directly to Jim Crow and segregation in 1964. In addition to that, he's lying because when he says try that in a small town, you're telling half the story. We were there first, then you run us out the town and then you dare us to come back. Do y'all understand that? Think of Tulsa. That case just got thrown out this month. Rednecks show up in Tulsa, run us out the town. They then come in the town and squat on the town and then claim to be the American and then dare the American to come back in that town or they will kill you. So he's telling a half truth in his in, in his country song and his hee haw redneck song. It's not your town. You didn't build none of this shit when you came over. You came over here with nothing. And I would like to know, Jason, when did your family come to America? And I'm pretty sure Jason got the same story that 90 percent of them have. Your people came over here with nothing. So you don't own any towns. You run, you ran us out of towns and then you squat in them and then you kill us when we try to come back in it. So that's all I want to cite to on the 1964 Civil Rights Act. We got to know this as a group of people, right? Now, I don't have a problem with the song because we need this in our face because we like to go to sleep and we like to think that uh, some of us are extreme when we're just citing to, you know, historical facts. So I, I would say keep the pressure on. So now I'm going to go to the 1965 Voting Rights Act the very next year. OK, here we go again, be it enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States and Congress assembled. We're showing you a pattern, people. Congress makes law. Now, they can't keep their lives straight when it comes to the American on the land, because they told us that there was a civil war and the 13th, 14th and 15th Amendment was supposed to be given to the people who were freed and uh, based on their lie that's supposed to be us. If that's the case, then why the fuck do you have a Voting Rights Act in 1965? I thought the 15th Amendment was supposed to do that. So they can't keep their lives straight because you were never entered into this system. I'm going to go to the next document, which is the 1968 Civil Rights Act. And school is not going to teach us this. It never will. Right. Most of us never knew about Tulsa. We don't know about sundown towns. You had to learn that from your family. Right. So this is the 1968 Indian Rights Act. And we can see here on the Title Two, On Section 201, it's the rights of Indians. Now, what's interesting about this act is they ended Jim Crow in 64. So the American can now freely go anywhere on his land. Right. He's no longer intensely military occupied. Then in 1965, they tell you you can vote. Which contradicts the 15th Amendment and a supposed civil war. Then in 1968, one week after Martin Luther King was assassinated, that's what you have to remember about this Civil Rights Act. Martin Luther King was killed April 4th, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. April 11th, 1968, Congress assembled in Lyndon Baines Johnson wrote the Indian Rights Act. In this act on Title II, there's four definitions of Indian. The first definition is Indian tribe. The second definition of power, the second definition is powers of self-government. The third definition is Indian court. The fourth definition is Indian. So what we're saying is there's one group of people that were, dis that were segregated, given voting rights. And are you telling me that after you kill a major player in those groups of people getting those rights, are you telling me that you, the, the same government has already admitted that they killed them? Are you telling me that you killed them on April 4th, 1968, and then you gave and defined the Indian rights? And who's the Indian? Another group of people? So this is what we have to ask Congress because they made the law. And that's just going to basically a lot of rotten fruit is going to fall from the tree. It is what it is. Because if we're not the Indian, who the fuck is? 
And then the second question is, why did it take so long? Why do we have to do this in order to find out the truth? But again, this is public information. So we're not standing on the soapbox saying, you know, whatever. We're saying everybody needs to use this information with these people. We can't be at the opposite end of the circuit. We're on the positive side and mainstream media is on the negative side with people who look like us. You can't keep calling us African-American when none of these acts, let me do control fine real quick, Negro. Now, right now I am on the 1968 Civil Rights Act. I'm doing a quick search for the word Negro. If you can see the error that pops up on my screen, no matches were found, okay? That's what this group of people was called on the land at that time. Let's do a quick search for the word color. No matches found for the word color. Let's do a quick search for the word black. Now this is 1968, one week after Martin Luther King. And lastly, well, let's do African-American, even though that word didn't even exist in the lexicon in America at that time. Lyndon Baines Johnson was calling us Negro on TV. Afro-American is not in this document. Now let's just do Indian. And I wanna keep it just this simple so that we can see, boom, Indian pops up 118 times in the 1968 Civil Rights Act and Indians with the S pops up 16 times. So what we're saying is Negro, Black and colored has never been defined by this government like the Indian has. So why are we using these words? It's just that simple. Why are we calling ourselves something that this government has never recognized? Let me go back real quick to the 1964. I'm gonna do that same quick search just to keep it as simple as possible so people can follow along and understand what we're saying. I just put the word Negro in. This is 1964 ending segregation. Negro is not in this document. Let's do color. No matches were found for color. Let's do black. No matches were found for black. This is 1964. And lastly, 1965. Let's do black. This is the Voting Rights Act. This, this was supposed to already took place for the Civil War on behalf of a certain group of people. No matches found for the word black, colored. No matches found for the word colored, Negro. No matches for the word Negro. And we know African-American wasn't a thing at that time, but we're gonna put it in anyway. No matches for Afro-American. So you got three Civil Rights Acts multiple people incarcerated, multiple people killed, but none of these documents say Negro, Black, and colored or defines what Negro, Black, and colored is. But you got people who look like us that's calling us Negro, Black, and colored. And on top of that, you got a Black Congressional Caucus. So what we're saying is it's time to ask the questions. Go ahead, Chief Biko. Let me stop sharing this. No, I'm rocking with you, man. Um. And it just makes sense. It makes sense. Somebody has questions. So that's the so the Native Americans are riding off of that. It seems like everybody's riding off of just the civil rights acts in general. But in regards to specifically the Native Americans, they're attaching themselves to that Indian term. Yet there's no definition that says Native American equals Indian. So that's a great point. So we have these people again. Um, basically posing as us and are taking advantage of it so again when we ask those questions we have to ask those questions okay those same questions that we ask within these documents which i'm about to share as far as when we're emailing these people that are supposed to be representing us or representing our group we have to ask these same three questions what are the definitions for negro black colored and african-american from the u.s congress and law why isn't there a Negro colored black or African-American rights act from the U.S. government like there is for the Indian, which we just referenced in that 1968 Civil Rights Act? And then as well, why do their campaign pages not list anything specifically for, quote unquote, black people, even though they are members of the Congressional Black Caucus? 
So these three simple questions are really going to put their backs against the wall to where they have to either give us a straight answer. Um, either way, it's going to have to be an answer, regardless of, you know, what that answer may be, we will still get a answer. And what I mean by that is either they're going to say it never has been, we've never been defined in Congress, or that we are really supposed to be under that Indian clause within that 1968 Civil Rights Act. And that's what we have to continue to ask these, these again, representatives or people who are supposed to be our representatives, even though, again, Black has never been defined in Congress. Um, and what we're showing here, again, just for our sake, we like to, again, show proof of claim. So these are the emails sent out to four of the, I believe, five representatives within the state of Georgia that are members of the Congressional Black Caucus. We will be sending these out again come tomorrow. So again, on that weekly cadence, continue to bombard these people. Again, we're not going to suggest anybody, um, you know, force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. But again, if you are one that says, you know what, I at least want to be able to send the email, you'll see the template that we've created within the description. Um, again, if you want to take that step and do the work, by all means, feel free. Um, but again, we're going to, as far as the people on this channel, put the forward, uh, put the work uh, necessary to go ahead and at least ask these questions. Um, so definitely wanted to show that and we'll continue to show this each week as our proof of claim until we get an answer, until we get an answer. Yeah, Anything you, you want to say on that? Yeah, no, just go into the email so the people can okay. see. Uh, you can't, you, the, the, this, so let's look at the date. So you sent it Monday, July 17. Mm -hmm. Yay. And we'll continue repetition is the key to learning. Some people are maybe, uh, following us, you know, here recently, all of our videos, their archive with the documents attached in the description section. So any video, if you see Dolls Act, for example, just go in the video description section and click on the link for the actual document. We have to educate ourselves and increase our intellect about what's going on, what's really happening with us. And unfortunately, we're just too far apart when it comes to those of us that are on mainstream media platforms and those like ourselves that have underground channels that, that won't cross over. And that's a very... Uh, Popular word for my generation, if you remember when rap music first kicked off, when we played the Ice Cube song from 1994 off Lethal Injection, that was a big thing, don't cross over. You know, here we are 30 years later, and a lot of our people that have major platforms have crossed over because they're not talking the way we're talking. Let me, let me correct that. They're not citing to documents the way that we're doing, they're talking. The days of listening to, I don't know, everybody different. I'm the type of person, I've never been a follower my whole life and I always hung around older people and the old heads put me up on game. If it ain't in writing, it's your shit. If you can't show me what the fuck you talking about, that's game. And so it's amazing that as adults with kids, with businesses, with careers, how do we let people just get in front of us and tell us anything and we don't challenge them to show us what you're talking about? That's basically what we're saying. We we grown as fuck. We can't get more growner than what we are. Why are we letting people call us black Afro-American minority under this underprivileged? What, 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 what is all of this? Show us, show us who that people are. And I'll just end on that before I go into the uh, well, you're gonna do the invention, but you know, mm -hmm. shout out to Ab TV and um Copper Empress because they do a lot of bills about TikTok and how. Native Americans and melanated immigrants, you know, have a lot of vitriol on TikTok. Well, doesn't that tie in with the 10th step of genocide? Mm. We're at the denial stage right now. The European just threw out the Tulsa, Oklahoma case, just dismissed it. They don't want to talk about the fact that that was your shit. We ran you out of it. And now we're going to act like it's ours. Now you got the state of Florida saying, you know what? We don't even want to tell you what happened in Florida. Never mind Seminole Wars. We ain't going to even talk about Seminole Wars, but we're not even going to talk about massacres where we, we were in every what you know town on this land. They ran us out of everything we've ever had. We're not going to tell you about that. What we will tell you, though, is how you added to your skill set while being prisoners of war. Also, debunk the slavery term on here. 
There's special field orders all over this land that clearly tells you plantations were managed by the quartermaster. The quartermaster mm -hmm. is a military person. Mm -hmm. So you can't be this far off with Negroes who get in front of the camera and, and call us Black Afro-American and we were slaves. How? This would, think about it. Everybody, anybody that's listening, would you get your ass up and work every day for nothing unless motherfuckers had guns and weapons around you willing to kill you at any time? We ain't talking about no whips either. You you see what I'm saying? So this whole lie that we were slaves, no, we were military occupied and we was on uh, plantation work camps. Shout out to Special Order 15 and uh, Major General Sherman Williams. Military work camps went from North Carolina all the way down to Florida. What y'all talking about? So go ahead, Chief Biko. You got it with the... Um, inventor for the week but we at the 10th stage right now they don't they want to deny everything that's happened and you also got other groups of people that are, are talking crazy out of their mouth so the stage is set that everybody doesn't like us so if you got the native americans talking shit on tiktok and then you got melanated immigrants talking shit on tiktok right then what happens when anything happens to this group of people all the U.S. citizens slash immigrants cool with you getting fucked over because the propaganda has already been put in place. They've seen so many murders of us that that shit normal to them now. You got it? No, absolutely. Absolutely. 100% agree with everything you said. And uh, yeah, we living through it right now. We living through it right now. Um, definitely want to give a shout out to Philly Goddess on Instagram for tagging us in on this particular gym. Uh, as you all know, who's been continuously following the channel, we drop an American Inventor every week. Uh, this one was brought to us by Philly Goddess. So again, salute to Philly Goddess on Instagram. Um, and this was an invention from, and I'm going to blow it up here. See if I can make this a little clearer. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll let me get any clearer. But this was brought or an invention from Alfred S. Hoggett, I believe that's how you pronounce it, uh, the last name. And this is the invention for the automatic crossing guard. Uh, so this is basically what comes down whenever, of course, a train or railroad is coming or passing through a particular intersection and stops vehicles from, of course, running into the, uh, the trains or railroads. Uh, this was filed March 19th, 1924. And the funny thing is, when I was doing some researches, they'll show different patents for this that's not created by this American Alfred S. Hoggett. But his was filed or predates any of the other filings that you may look up when you type in like crossroad or um, crossing guard, automatic crossing guard or anything like that. Um, so, again, this is filed March 19th, 1924. And that patent number is 15460730. Again, that is 15460730. And I'm just going to read a little bit about it. it. Says, in an automatic railway crossing gate, in combination with the gate to be operated, counterpart trip mechanisms located oppositely beyond the gate, each mechanism compromising a or comprising a dispensable or depressible trip member means yieldable or yieldably resisting depression thereof and for returning the same to normal position when depressed and then relieved of pressure. A lever having an outstanding arm operative connection between the levers of the two trip mechanisms and the gate for operating the latter when either lever is, uh, is actuated and means actuated through depression of said member and coat, I believe that is coating or coating with the arm of the representative lever to accutate or uh, yeah accutuate ac yeah accutuate the latter upon return movement of the trip member to the normal position so again this was created by an american to stop vehicles or pedestrians from crossing over railroad tracks when trains were coming and again definitely shout out to philly goddess for this gym Definitely anybody who has, you know, American vendor that we haven't gone over before or a particular um, invention, definitely email us, hit us up on Instagram, anything like that. Definitely want to um, hear from you all because, again, we have so many. We have so many. We can go pretty much years without repeating the same one. So definitely want to shout out um, that particular person for this one. Next here. Uh... 
pass it off to you, Chief Alligator, for this week's Dr. Carter G. Woodson quote. To scroll down a little bit, uh, I'm going to go down to the last one. Let's do 12. I'm going to do 12. Uh, no, it's not 12. Scroll up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay, number nine, my bad. I don't know why I thought it was 12. All right, today's Dr. Carter G. Woodson quote comes from the book, The Miseducation of the Negro. Quote nine is this. Negroes must become like English gentlemen who study the law of the land, not because they intend to practice the profession, but because every gentleman should know the law. In the interpretation of the law by the courts too, all the rights of the Negroes in this country are involved, and a larger number of us must qualify for this important service. We may have too many lawyers of the wrong kind, but we have not our share of the right kind. And this is self-explanatory. We, I, I just did it this uh, when we opened up the live today, citing to the three civil rights acts. We're supposed to know this, y'all. As adults, as adult men and women who have family members that were on this land living under segregation, we are supposed to know this just like we know our favorite rap song or just like, you know, your favorite teams uh, starting five, you know, coaching, coaching staff, who's the owner, the manager, who got traded. We're supposed to know this. We don't know this. They don't go into detail like, like we did, just giving you the cheat test on the 1964, 65, and 68 Civil Rights Act. All we got was I Have a Dream and Rosa Parks. This is why we're kind of like retarded when it comes to law. And so it's like every week we're playing hindsight. No, we're not playing hindsight. Now we're on the offense, but we watch Negroes in the mass media playing hindsight oh they did this this is white supremacy and racism no the people are uneducated about law and how this government works it's a system it's a machine the voted supply is congress congress makes the law we gotta get that we've never been defined by this congress we are null and void. We are in a video game arcade room and we have coins that cannot convert to play the games. We're in the video game arcade room, but whatever we pulling out our pocket, putting in that machine to get change back, it's not, it's not converting. So we're watching other groups of people come over here and they're able to get converted because they're specifically defined. Now they're getting ready to tell you, you need more people in the Senate. I'm sorry, more people in the house to get anything done for you. But remember the Asian got an Asian hate bill in less than one fiscal quarter, 90 days. So you always have impossible tasks to get basic shit when other people get it and Asians don't show up in the numbers we do when it comes to voting because they're not on this landmass like that. So we got to start watching the play. It's, it's, it's Tom and Jerry at this point. It's, it's when you know what's really going on and you understand how it works, they're treating us like minors, basically like kids. All we're saying is it's not going to stop. What we're seeing with affirmative action being uh, removed from school, uh, Florida openly changing uh, Black history. Georgia did it this year. This was the first year for Georgia where they took MLK, MLK out of the curriculum. There was no riff about that. Nobody really said nothing. Now here we are. They threw the reparations case out for Tulsa with three living survivors. So why are we still talking reparations? If you grow, why are we talking reparations if we ain't gonna make no noise about that? So we're at the 10th stage, which is denial. Basically, we just gonna get rid of anything that says how we fucked you over. We ain't even counting the, the murders in all the towns that they ran us out of. Nobody's ever been charged for it. Nobody's getting double life sentences for anything that they've ever stole from us. And we're just kind of walking around clueless 
because we don't know the law of the land. Not saying that we want to be a part of said government, but said government has been occupying us and playing a mind game on us. And they need your consent to continue to fuck you over. Look at all your losses since Biden has been in office. And when you and if you go vote again for it, you're you're telling the world, hey, they consent to it. I'm gonna leave it right there. I'll continue with this week's uh, readings of legal definitions and maroon historical points. Number one, we have American, indigenous to America. Number two, descendants, one who follows in the bloodline of an ancestor, either linearly or collaterally. Number three, slavery, a situation in which one person has absolute power over the life, fortune, and liberty of another. Number four, prisoner of war, a person, usually a soldier, who is captured by or surrenders to the enemy in wartime. Number five, school, any institution at which instruction is given in a particular discipline. Number six, education, an enlightening experience. And number seven, recovery, a return to a normal state of health, mind, or strength, the action or process of regaining possession of something stolen or lost. And for the five historical maroon points, number one was a person escaping slavery, seeking freedom, or breaking the law. Number two, providing unity and a strong defense came first. Number three, maroon leaders were first and foremost military figures. Number four, Maroons established guerrilla warfare, planting sharp sticks and thick grass. And number five, Maroons knew their European enemies' language, defenses, and plans. And those are the legal definitions and Maroon historical points. Go ahead and stop sharing. And I'll let you share your screen there, Chief Alligator, as we jump into the COINTELPRO. Back this out here. And while you're doing that, um, mm -hmm. it just looks like it's perfect timing how everything is lining up for us. Where, yeah, this third fiscal quarter has been a uh, has been a motherfucker. We've had some monumental losses uh, just starting off the month of July, the third, the first, the, you know, the first month in the third fiscal quarter with affirmative action, then the Tulsa case being thrown out. Uh, you can see where they're moving going into this next election. You know, now they got their theme song, you know, getting getting airplay. I think it was like 50 million views, you know, on, try that in a small town. So I could see Donald Trump coming out to that song when it starts right. to ramp. But, you know, so we're just, right. they're forecasting years in advance. We do no forecasting as a group of people. You know, we do no planning. There's no agenda. So it's, so we're just kind of running around uh, with magical belief systems. You know, we, we can't seem to put the Bible down, put the Quran down, put the Circle 7 down and actually look at the history and the laws of this government. You know, that's, that, that's our biggest issue. We can't get past belief systems. You know, it, it, it's, it's, we're crazy as hell. We, we belong in mental insane asylums. Because when you talk to us, we'll start off talking about what's happening on the land and then we'll divert into make believe. Correct. In, in, in the transition, when you're grounded and you understand American history, you can watch an elder and, and you'll see where their mind, they'll go right into denial. So what we got is two groups of people that are in denial. The European is in denial about what they've done to us. And then you got us being in denial about what's happened to us. That probably makes us the craziest group of people on planet Earth. I don't know another group of people that are in denial about being fucked over. And we keep going through the same thing over and over and over again. We can't understand that we're not talking belief systems, theology, ideology. We're talking history and law, which are facts. Mm -hmm. Correct. I think the stupidest way or the simplest way I could put it is if I'm sitting in the room with my family and one person wants to be more, one person wants to be nation of Islam, one person is Christian and one one auntie is Muslim. We all can agree that there was Jim Crow. Regardless of what your belief system is. So you see the problem if you kind of look at it like if you're sitting in the room with your family 
Everybody gonna have different belief systems, but history and law cuts through your belief system because all of them elders in your family all were under Jim Crow. Whether you think you Moorish, whether you think you Nation of Islam, whether you think you Christian, Hebrew, Israelite, all you niggas was Jim Crow. So it's like after Jim Crow, niggas wanna act like, well, I'm better than. How? All of y'all was segregated. I'm gonna I'm stop right there. We gotta get that. And we may not get it because we've already been uh, reclassified and renamed so much. We may not get it, but at least we're leaving a, a digital footprint out here uh, mm -hmm. with the documents to back it up. But uh, we crazy as hell, man, as a group of people. Man, man. Let me see where we left off as well. I could pull that up. Here we go. Shoot, it should have popped up automatically. No problem. While we're waiting on that, man, we'll, uh, you know, we're not beating up on our people or nothing like that. But I mean, we're watching this ball. You know, this snowball is so big at this point and it's rolling full speed downhill. It's not going to stop unless we stop it. It is not going to stop unless we stop it. I, I really don't understand what are we afraid of. You literally have nothing to lose. Um, you have uh, you have first generation immigrants disrespecting you on social media platforms. Uh, you have Native Americans disrespecting you with 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 no no military records that they can cite to. I'm gonna give y'all a bone for those that like to uh, debate with Native Americans. If 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 you're from the land, where's the war records? Why is it that it's only one group of people that's in all the war records from any wars that's been on this land? If you are the American Native American, shouldn't you be in special field orders? Hmm. Shouldn't there be major generals all over this land talking about you in particular? Where you at? We're not even going to get into the who birthed music and who birthed all the invent. We ain't even got to go there. Let's just go to if this is your land, we would assume you fought to not lose it. Where you at in the military records? Treaties are military records. Special field orders are military records. General orders like the one for Juneteenth is military records. Where y'all at? I can't find them. You still unable to pull it up? No, I got it now. Okay. All uh, right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Should be at the top of page 20, I believe, because I don't think it was on here. You know what I mean? 14. Yeah. So they told, let me blow this up a little bit. All right. You want me to take off? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we're getting back into the FBI COINTELPRO document. This is literally running parallel with the civil rights movement. So while we're trying to end Jim Crow, get voting rights, and get recognized as humans and have a nationality, at the same time that the government and the states are warring against us, the states are warring against us via Jim Crow. The United States government is warring against us via benign and neglect, never recognizing us in writing. We also have the FBI that is destroying anything that we're trying to organize ourselves as to move this thing forward. So it's an open and shut case at this point. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and start off. It says, they told me quite frankly that the Bureau informers within the Black Panthers had been told to align themselves with either the Cleaver faction or the Newton faction and intensify the split, said one college professor who had consulted with bureau officials. Even in the Hoover Cointel Pro termination memo, Hoover noted that in exceptional instances where it is considered counterintelligent actions is warranted, such action will be considered on an individual basis. We'll stop right here. So what we can see right here is the Black Panthers were told to align themselves with Cleaver or Newton. So I don't know what Cleaver's first name would be, but of course, Newton would be Huey Newton. And 
the FBI is going to intensify the split. But again, this is coming from a college professor. This is not coming from somebody that's in the Black Panther Party, right? But we can see right here, divide and conquer, even within the uh, Black Panther Party. If you can scroll up a little bit. Uh, no, down. I mean, down. All right. The single most striking thing that comes to mind reviewing these COINTELPRO programs is the almost universal success that they enjoy. The new left, the Communist Party, white hate groups like the KKK and Black extremists like the Black Panthers have all been racked with bloody factioning schisms and leadership splits. It is a cliche today that the new left factionalized itself to death. Perhaps now more thought ought to be given to the hand of the bureau and all of that. There it is right there. The, the FBI is admitting that it factionalized the Black Panther Party. It infiltrated it and dissolved really an emotional and a last ditch chance for us to organize. Remember, this is less than a month after they've assassinated King. So we're scrambling. We're trying to get on code. Same thing we're doing now in 2023. We're trying to get on code. Can we do something? Can we figure something out? Can we organize? Can we get on offense? And here we see the government is infiltrating and shutting down any signs of standing up and to add the cherry on top They'll call you militant for trying to end segregation, vote under the government that's occupying you, and then for trying to get your nationality back. You're militant for doing that. So the denial is there. We were at stage 10 in 1968. The story of the Bureau's infiltration of the KKK is set forth in the 1970 book by the Bureau's historian, Don Whitehead attack on terror, the FBI against the KKK in Mississippi. Objective analysis of Whitehead's story shows that even if bureau policy on COINTELPRO is negative, with infiltrators in place seeking information on criminal activities, they invariably engage in expired action for COINTEL purposes, spreading rumors, gossip, and factional hatred. Whitehead says FBI infiltrators soon reduce Klan meetings to bickering, distrust, and wrangling over money. Now, this is not coming from the FBI. They're referring to a book from 1970. Pay attention to that. They're giving you direct notes and minutes when they talk about the Black Panther. The FBI is saying, this is what we did, but they're not giving you direct minutes from what they did to the Ku Klux Klan. They're citing to a book somebody wrote. So it's not all the way accurate, y'all. That's the same thing we're suffering from today when it comes to our history on this land. People are citing you to books and not citing you to government records. Can you scroll up to the top? Okay. The story is the same among the black power groups. Leadership squabbles, petty bickering, bloody infighting, literally with assassinations and gunplay between rival organizations and ideologues, reduced and finally destroyed every militant Black group with the exception of the Black Muslims. So I wasn't born in, in 1970. But we descend from people who were alive during the time of King's assassination and it was different groups trying to organize. And the FBI is saying the only one they couldn't crack was the Black Muslims. On the white left, strangely, it is the Socialist Workers Party, an old left group that seems to have best withstood the determined efforts of Bureau agents to fragment and demoralize. This despite the fact that the Bureau considered them a key target and had actually gone so far as to focus COINTEL program directly against the group. SWP now has a pending lawsuit in New York for an injunction against harassment, infiltration and intimidation of their members. We have gone long past the point where any aware citizen could doubt that act activists and dissident and minority political groups are subjected to surveillance, mail cover, wiretapping, and infiltration. 
And when the president personally approves a policy of burglary, as Nixon admitted when he said he approved the Houston plan, little should surprise. But still, it is difficult to acknowledge the scale involved. Next to, wire and next to wiretapping, infiltrators and informers have drawn the most public attention. Yet for all the dozens of celebrated informers which the government has brought forward, from Douglas to Lammer, a state coordinator for the Vietnam veteran against the war, to Tom Morsher, a white who became so important to the Panthers that in 1971, they refused to meet with Weatherman representatives without him present. There is still reason to believe that the surface is barely scratched. So what do you wanna uh, build on this? Uh, what I just read, Chief Biko? Uh, that's a lot back on that section yeah. that I finished. Uh, again, something that just stood, stood out to me, it's not just coming from you know rogue members in a particular department. It clearly stated that the head of this whole system, the president, approved this plan. Not just any plan, but a plan to actually go into people's home, burglarize, um, and pretty much take anything that they needed as far as uh, evidence or whatever they may call it to enact whatever agendas they had, which was to destroy um, these activists and what they were trying to do. That's what's sticking, uh, standing out to me. Um, just shows, you know, there, there was no law in 1968 and there is none now. Or in the 1970s, rather. Correct. I'm with you on that. I'll, I'll continue to go. Uh... It's a painful read, but I've, you know, I've this not my first time reading it, but if people are reading along and this is your first time listening to it, you have to ask yourself, why is school never taught us this? Why is it that so-called leaders of organizations, why are they not coming into the communities right. and educating us on this? Why are they just hiding behind the word racism? You know, why are we not getting into the science of what actually happened? You know, how, why is it we can't get on our feet, hmm. right? It's because yeah. there, there is a practical and a theory of, op there is a theory of operation and then there's a practical application of it. Correct. We ain't lazy. We ain't shiftless. <laughs> this shit is organized warfare. Go ahead, Chief Biko. I mean, it's saying it right here. Finally destroy every militant black group that's trying to every, and again, that word militant as if, you know, trying to be self-sufficient, trying to protect oneself is deemed or has, has a negative connotation to it. Uh, that's the first thing. But again, it's clearly highlighting that we don't want this. We, meaning this United States government, doesn't want this for our group of people. Um, yet you'll hear it within their propaganda machines through media saying, you know, there is no, you know, systemic uh, oppression of a particular group of people when we're seeing a document from the FBI admitting to all of that. Um, and again, like you said, this isn't taught in school. You know, you may hear about Watergate in a paragraph, maybe a sentence, if, if that, within your, you know, U.S. history books, and then you're on to, you know, the Bush presidencies. But they're not going into depth on how coming out of, again, the Civil Rights Acts, in the civil rights uh, era, going straight into another campaign that was being led by a president to destroy a group of people. You don't hear about that yet. Again, to your media, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps when it's been constant warring against a particular group. Right. And then there's an overlay of religion. Hmm. I will say it, you know, um, one of the things that I I despised when I was growing up. And I understand now that I've always been a free thinker. But when I was growing up and I would ask certain elders in my family hard questions, they would hide behind Jesus. And that never made sense to me. And this is where we are as a group of people. The reason why we don't get into these documents and really understand what happened to us is because people who look like us get in front of TV screens and then they start going religious. 
and start talking about, you know, and Moses part of the What the hell they got to do with the FBI infiltrate anything we organized in the 60s? You understand what I'm saying, Chief Bino? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't oh, real to me. Like, I'm not sure. Like, they always want to go hope. We time out for the hocus pocus shit. You see what I'm saying? You got to come straight up the middle with what's going on. And that's been the problem with us. Nobody wants to come straight up the middle and tell the truth. Everybody wants to hide behind their belief system. What if I don't believe what you believe? Correct. 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 Like, again, that's it basically seemed like, you know, it's mentioned about factionalizing or, you know, creating factions within a particular group. Hell, we do that amongst ourselves just by particular, you know, belief systems. I mean, we see here the black Muslims. But again, what if you're like you said, what if you're not a Muslim? What if you're not a Christian? What if you're not a, a Hebrew, you know, Israelite. Hebrew is Israelite, you know, yeah, like what the fuck they got? <laughs> yeah. What they got to do with them? Cointel Pro. Yeah. yeah Cointel Pro. Cointel Pro. What the hell Moses <laughs> got to do with Cointel Pro? What the hell Elijah thing. Muhammad got to do with Cointel Pro? What Buddha got to do with COINTEL Pro? None of these theologies have to do with what would really happen. And that's all we're saying is we're, we're in the information age now, man. And your belief system is for you to practice privately. I never debate people on their belief system. It's a waste of time because we're talking make believe. I'm not going to try to convince you that the bunny rabbit don't exist or Peter Pan can't fly. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. We're going to have a conversation. Bring your documentation and let's read it and then let's get an understanding of what, what actually happened. Correct. Correct. Uh, almost all the informers who have been revealed are almost palpably crazy, schizoid, paranoids, and there has been much talk that this is the standard species for the role. Unlikely, long-standing bureau policy has been to reveal only expendable infiltrators unless absolutely necessary to do otherwise. Mm. And no one familiar with the media files, which document a plan to get an informer on every block of the Philadelphia ghetto can doubt that they have numbers to choose from. See, this is what I'm talking about. Let's get to the crux of it. So yeah. the FBI particularly is pointing out the Philadelphia ghetto. Now we're not gonna get into detail on this Chief Biko, but do you know that in addition to Tulsa, Oklahoma, there were bombs dropped in Philadelphia's ghetto in the early mm -hmm. 70s? Somebody's yeah. in the old enough to remember what, what was that called when they went into Philadelphia and started blowing up certain buildings and stuff? This is what the FBI is citing to. Mm -hmm. Can somebody in the chat tell us what that was? Uh, anything you want to say on that part that I just built on right there? No, I mean, definitely, um, I can't think of the name of what it was called, but I definitely heard about that. Um, and it was a group uh, against a group of our people who were trying to pretty much create their own community. I do know that much, but I'm not sure what the name they gave it. You know, they like to give names on these things. Um, but also something that stood out to me was the, um, the, I guess, the character that they look for in regards to these uh, informers. Like I said, these people who are looked at as, you know, schizophrenic, paranoid, expendable, but those who are like, okay, they're pretty good at what they do. They want to keep those in-house. That was something that um kind of stood out to me and uh, just kind of reading in the chat, definitely gatekeepers. That's what they sound like right there. So all of these gatekeepers, like you said, these people um, who are these um, quote unquote religious leaders or, you know, leaders of the, black community who's to say they aren't these infiltrators who's and to say they, got, they you know go ahead no i mean it says in black and white that there was an informer on every block of the philadelphia ghetto hmm. can that they have numbers to choose from so yeah you're living you're living behind enemy lines and this is after segregation has ended after now you can vote in this government and after they've it well yes well we know now because we're 60 years removed from it what they did was damn they killed king. okay let's talk common sense now you kill king april 4th 1968 and then seven days later you do a 1968 civil rights act and you clearly define 
what an Indian is, what its self-government is, what its power of government is, and what an Indian tribe is. Who today is operating under such definitions that were given in 1968? Who has the casinos? Who's claiming tribe? Who has government? Shout out to growing up in South Florida. Do you know that when you growing up in South Florida, you do you know that the areas they live in, it's outside of the jurisdiction? You know, uh, the county, the county sheriff, let's just say Broward County, for example. Do you know that they got their own police department and everything like that? And growing up, niggas was just ass back was like we 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 thought it was interesting, but we didn't. Nobody told us, oh, that's because they traded places with you in 1968. Yeah, you know, all that work y'all did getting bit by dogs and the fire department hitting you with water hoses and blowing up your churches. And remember all that y'all went through? Yeah, that one group of people that put all that work in? Yeah, we cut the head off the snake by killing MLK and then we swapped y'all out with some, I don't know where them damn people come from, don't care. But they weren't a part of that movement. And here we are now, 60 years later, looking back and nobody wants to talk about the 1968 Indian Rights Act. It, including the Black Caucus. Nigga, you won't be in the caucus if it wasn't for the 1968 Civil Rights Act. What's wrong? <laughs> Go ahead, Chief Pico. <laughs> nah, I mean, you can't even make this up. You can't even make this up. Legit trade in places, legit face off like the movie. Just legit did that. Wow. <laughs> mm hmm. I tell you, boy, I was trying to find that uh, the name and they gave it. What, for Philadelphia? Mm hmm. Okay, hopefully somebody in the chat will uh, hit you with it. I'm going to keep reading. Okay. We have some glimpses of the divisive tactics used by the COINTEL programs on the record. Mm -hmm. The use of performers to split the groups, as in the Panthers, is obvious. More sophisticated tactics were also used. Robert Wall, a former FBI agent who resigned after five years service in 1970, has reported how he was, how he was assigned to COINTELPRO New Left in Washington, D.C. One of the divisive ploys he recounted involved a letter written to the leaders of the National Mobilization Committee in D.C., threatening that the Blacks in Washington would not support, got to scroll so I can see, would not support an upcoming rally unless a security bond of $20,000 was given to a black organization. The bureau forged the signature of the leader of the black organization and at the same time had its informers in the black organization suggest the idea of the security bond to the leaders of the black group informally. Later, said Wall, through informants in the National Mobilization Committee, we learned that the letter had caused a great deal. Stop right there and go back up. Don't even go to the next page yet. Look how criminal the FBI was. They forged the signature of one of the leaders of the Black Panthers, then told the informants about the grant. But the leader never signed the grant. The FBI forged the signature. But let me say it correctly what the, what, the, what the words say. The Bureau forged the signature of the leader of the Black organization and at the same time had its informers in the Black organization suggest the idea of the security bond to the leaders of the Black group. You can't win for losing. So whoever that leader was is going to be federally indicted by mm -hmm. the federal government for uh, signing a security bond of $20,000 that he never even signed. And then all they right. got to do is probably put out on the mainstream media, oh, he was arrested when he was 13 or he got into some got into a scuffle with, with, with law enforcement. And then, you know what our group do? Oh, well, they got him. He done fucked up. Now nah, he done signed for the $20,000 grant. Mm -hmm. FBI signed the shit. <laughs> Okay. No, yeah, yeah, straight felony being committed by the FBI. Yeah, like you stated, gonna look past that um, when it comes to their system because it is their system. 
Uh, so again, just more examples, more proof uh, of just straight war and lawlessness being uh, enacted on our group people. I mean, damn. And again, just admitting it. But again, this is supposed to be just, well, you know, that's in the past, as if this still isn't happening today to our uh, group of people. Anytime we try to organize. Mm -mm. Anybody recall being taught in school about the Black Panthers? I never learned anything about Black Panthers in school. In addition to that, you got people from our lineage that will call that group militant when if you never read the FBI COINTEL document, you would find out that they were operating legit, as it stated last week when we were reading, but they would infiltrate and create fake crimes against the people trying to work for the people. But your own people will call you militant. We read in the document, they forging signatures, they they implanting people. You got people on every corner in Philly. God damn. I just want to say shout out to, I believe it's Kahi, uh, said that that movement or what it was called was Move, uh, Move in Philly. And he dropping a lot of uh, info in regards to the chat. So definitely shout out to uh, Kahi. Salute to you, man, on that one. Yeah, good looking out on that. Yeah. I wasn't even born at that time. This is why knowing, knowing our history is so important. Because we we all know about Tulsa, but we really don't know about Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I, I heard about it, but again, this is not taught in school. This is just being around older people that were young kids around that time that would you know drop little nuggets of game. Mm -hmm. But remember when I now I'm just gonna I'll say this real quick. When I was a youth, uh, Chief Biko, you got to picture a world where no, there was no internet. I know that's hard to kind of imagine, but when I was coming through school, there was no internet. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the only way you could get these documents, you would have to go to the Washington, D.C., go to the Library of Congress. So we're in a different age now where all we got to do is jump on the phone or jump on the computer. There's no reason for us to be dumb at this point. So right. some people may call us militant on this channel. Oh, they pulling up the Civil Rights Act. You got damn right because it's at our it's at, it's it's accessible. Mm -hmm. All of this is, all of it is just like how Kahi was able to pull up, you know, the bombing in Philadelphia. I mean, what it say? Uh, I'm not sure when it happened. I know he said the it was founded in 1972. So we talking about something way more recent than the Tulsa bombing. Yet nobody talks about it. and when i say nobody i'm talking about folks from our group we already know what they're going to do they're going to you know brush it under the rug hell people didn't know about tulsa oklahoma till 2020 a lot of people so again does it have to be another 100 years for this to even be something in the mainstream media or should we as you know the americans as adults start again teaching our history no, this is what they did in 1972 or or whenever they actually uh, dropped it. So like you so, said, just as far as learning about Black Panthers, wasn't in school at all. Right. And it was a different time back then, but we're at a point now where if you got a problem with what we're doing, again, everybody, we're, this is public information, so we're sharing the documents. If somebody were to tell me they had a problem with me educating myself on what really happened before I was born in the information age, you're telling me exactly who you are. You profit off my ignorance. It's beneficial to you for us to stay dumb and distracted and not know what happened. See, we moving all the belief systems aside and we get into these documents. We got to know the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish. What's okay. that last from the previous page so I can flow into this one? Gotcha. Okay, so it says, later said Wall, through informants in the NMC, we learned that the letter had caused a great deal of confusion and had a significant effect on the planning for the march. Wall also revealed that the COINTELPRO relied heavily on leaking confidential FBI files 
and sometimes just fanciful lies to sympathetic media context. Hoover's memo setting up the new left COINTEL stresses covert use of the media as a bureau policy to be implemented locally, like in Boston. Aren't we living under that today? Aren't they telling fanciful lies through the media? Come on, y'all. Go ahead, Chief Vico. Where you at with that? We in 2023, and it's the same play. I'm about to, I was just about to say that. We said it last week, said it the week before, the week prior to that one. We're seeing the same plays over and over again. We're seeing the same plays. Even folks in the chat realizing it as well. Um, whether it's bombings, whether it's infiltration, we're seeing the same plays. Yet, even though they admit to using these same plays, their media will say, you know, oh, this isn't, you know, systemic or anything like that. This is how the system is supposed to be run. Or you'll have these instances, you have your affirmative actions, your your rulings on how history was actually, uh, what how act, how it actually happened. Yeah, but reading straight from the people involved is FBI in regards to what they did to specific groups and how they did it. Man, this is real. It's too real for TV. The truth mm-hmm. is unbelievable. The truth is unbelievable. Because they can't keep their lives straight. Yeah. Frank Donner, director of the American Civil Civil Liberties Union Project on Political Surveillance, said that he has learned from bureau sources that FBI technicians developed a machine capable of perfectly reproducing a signature and used it tactically to sow distrust and dissent among Communist Party members. They forged wow. signatures. They Not forged only that. They created a whole machine to do it. Man. Yeah, we don't think that people can't have, you know, what is it, computerized AI voices to say, oh, that was him. No, I I mean, we heard the call. How you know there wasn't the AI that took somebody's voice? I mean, and and, uh, go ahead. No, I just want to go spiritual because I'm a spiritual person. I don't I don't deal with belief systems. I deal with science and math. Um, We are a very righteous people. And what we're watching is the European have to cheat to make us look guilty. Think about that. You created a machine to forge signatures. That means that you have to trump up charges against righteous people. And here's the here's the medieval part about it. I ain't even really tripping off the fact that you're creating fake signatures. Then you place those same righteous people back in front of their own people and then their own people condemn them. That's the demonic part on our part. We go along with the fuck shit. Shout out Bill Cosby. We go along with the bullshit. We let these people put in our face trumped up charges and then we condemn our own people what's wrong with us man what's wrong with us like you said earlier man the truth is hard to believe it make us sound crazy when we read this somebody just said in the uh, chat say man i can't even have no girlfriend or uh, or friends because of this like I, i feel you because when you're reading these things, it's like, bro, you you off the you off the rocker. Yet we're reading the documents that say exactly what we're saying. Yet we'll be looked at as crazy. I mean, shh. well, we're not. Well, <clears throat> as you recover individually, you start to realize that the masses of us stay the same. The reality is, picture our group of people let out of a nut house, a crazy house. We crazy as shit, y'all. We'll run around talking about Hebrew, Israelite, Christianity, and won't even look at what the government was doing to us. These immigrants do, man, I'm finna say something. These immigrants do have a reason to kind of talk shit in a way, because it's like, you niggas dumber than a motherfucker, man. 
how you condemn your own people without getting the facts first? They don't even do that. They kill us on video and they say, well, hold on. Uh, the video ain't everything. Let's go through the court procedure while we raise these millions of dollars for his defense fund. We're not going to say that the video is telling the whole truth. Everybody knows self-preservation is the first law of nature. Us, they allow on our own people and put it in our face. Bill Cosby raped somebody 50 years ago. Oh, shit. He need to go to jail. Put him up under the jail. We don't even we don't even approach the conversation from a fact finding process to say, well, let's see what kind of evidence you got on the man. That's how sick we are. That if they put handcuffs on us, we automatically assume you've done something wrong when that same people ran you out your town, squatting in your town and was blowing your brains out during segregation. If you came back to your town, this shit crazy as hell. Chief Biko, what you got to say? I mean, I can't even say it no better, bro. Like, got us not talking about folks on the chat or anything on the panel, but the collective majority of us, you know, think that way. It don't matter what it is. Like he said, it could be somebody who's been an upstanding citizen in the community, been doing nothing but positive for our community, yet hear anything, oh, bro, he was out there, you know, moving keys like you want to know what it's like damn i knew it was something crooked like huh just off a little inkling of something negative like you said don't don't try to gather the facts just go along with the narrative as if they're not showing us that these are lies that have been told by the highest department as far as policing under this government so if the FBI can do it, what makes you think that your local police and sheriffs can't do it? It's called a war on drugs and a war on crime. And you got a man sitting in the executive branch presidential office as we speak that wrote pen to paper, wrote the 94 crime bill. He's the mastermind of it. When I was telling people that and uh, when it was time for everybody to vote for Biden, Family members looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, Trump, Biden, ain't, Trump ain't got nothing on Biden. Biden actually created Frankenstein. He wrote the 94 crime bill. We ain't even got to look at the people who voted for the shit. Just realize who he is. He wrote that shit. Let me keep reading. The Bureau planted signed documents in the car of a New York communist functionary by the name of William Anderson and arranged to have them discovered and Anderson denounced as an FBI spy. The CP went so far as to turn the papers over to an expert attached to the Russian embassy who pronounced the signature Anderson's. Wow. You see the game? You planted fake documents, then turn around and said the man was a spy and then give the shit to Russia and say, yeah, these are his documents. But you forged the shit out of them and got the nerve. Shout out to the nuts they got. Got the nerve to put it back as public record through the Freedom of Information Act to show you we were lying like a motherfucker. Man, you know how many... People from my generation in prison right now, bro, from drugs and guns being planted on them. And your own people would be like, man, everybody in prison going to say they're innocent. You, 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 you feel me? And we reading this shit. We're reading what they did to righteous organizers. So if they were doing this to righteous organizers, what you think they're going to do to the local guy in the neighborhood that uh, don't have a job and don't have a wallet on him with his ID when they just when they decide to uh, randomly stop and search him. Oh yeah, nigga, you got this key. Yeah, let's close that case. Let me pick back up right here. Uh, Anderson was discredited and bounced from the party. A civil libertarian note: membership and activity in the CP is constitutionally protected. Another COINTEL project that was revealed in the media papers was a program to mail articles critical of the new left to unfathomably liberal college administrators anonymously. 
One of the media documents is a note assigning colleges to agents for the selective distribution of an article from Barron's on the barbarian hordes at Columbia. So now they send in fake documents to the colleges as well, the college administrators. The FBI fought a nine month court battle attempting to withhold these documents, but the DC federal court found that the bureaus claim that they were investigative law enforcement files, spacious and ordered them revealed as agency policy and programs under the Freedmen of Information Act. The only way they were able to get the documents was like, hey man, we, we got a Freedom of Information Act. You can't hide them no more. This was the first time the courts have compelled the Justice Department to make a Freedom of Information revelation and will set a president that will be very useful for those who dislike hidden government policies. This is revelation what we're doing. Damn the, the, the stories. Chief Biko, anything you got to say? Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Um, again, it's just, you know, it, it's so crazy that it's hard to believe. And that, again, that they're admitting this and then yet people still tell us to vote within this system is the craziest thing I have ever heard. It's like it's the, the most backward thing I have ever heard. They're telling from the horse's mouth how crooked we are. Yeah, you have people that look like me and you and everybody on the chat and say, but we got to vote them out. It's the system is crooked. What are you talking about? You you plugging in different parts as if the system ain't supposed to continue to run how it's supposed to, even with those new parts. That's the that's the most, you know, mind boggling thing that I'm seeing with all this. We're not a part of the schematic. Um, any system has a wiring diagram. The wiring diagram is going to have the components that are in that necessary circuit. Us as a group of people, we're not a component in the circuit. Mm -hmm. We don't get that. And I think that's the thing that we, when I say we, as just talking about the collective, the majority have to I'm not even sure at this point if we if it it if hearing it from the horse's mouth will. I'm a, nah, I I got hope in our people that that will be like something that makes it click finally. But if we're hearing through this document, Cointel Pro, all the stuff they did, and going back to us sending out these emails to these congressmen, if we hear as a group that we are never or we were never supposed to be a part of this system hence why we will never be written into law if that'll wake up the majority of the people if we ask them okay define the african-american or define what we give them american in your law if they don't do that will that wake us up i mean that's we're at the end game that's mm -hmm. um i'm going back to the circuit because we hear these words, like when they talk about the judicial branch, they always talk about circuit, mm -hmm. right? Correct, correct. So let me, let me walk you in my mind real quick. Um, a circuit is a component within the system. So let me, give an, let me give an example of a car. A car is a system, but there's different circuits within the car. You have a brake system you have a drive system you have an air conditioning system you have a heating system right you have these different circuits within the system this system has three circuits legislative executive judicial the power supply the battery for this system is congress it makes the law this group of people that they call slave through propaganda media has never been defined as slave through Congress, never been defined as black, Negro, colored, or now the new term Afro-American. What does that tell us people? 
you have a car with no AC in it. You bought a car with no brake system. You're not a part of the car. But the car lot salesman, politician, convinced you to buy that car off the car lot. He told you it's the best car on planet Earth. It's the best government on planet Earth, democracy. You can't get hotter than this. Man, look, boy, we got 22s on that thing. You know what I'm saying? You got your, you got your Bluetooth capability. We got bold speakers in this motherfucker. Do my, a, do my L work? Yeah, all that shit work, bro. How much is going to run me? It's going to run you 20 grand. Straight up. Man, let's, let's go in there. Let's talk paperwork, man. Let's get this shit going. And then so did you drive off the lot and turn that AC on. Man, that shit don't work. That's us in this system. We keep complaining about the system because you're not a component in it. You're not that. You're not the resistor. You're not the transistor. You're not the capacitor. You're not the inductor. You're not the wire. You're not the voted source. You're nothing. You're, you're not in the system. And we go president after president watching these people handle business. And it's like we're in the stands rooting on good decisions or we root on bad decisions. Oh, they found cocaine in the White House. Shit ain't got nothing to do with you because you ain't part of the system. So it's like you spectate and you only come out the stands to vote. They throwing around billions of dollars to Afghanistan, Ukrainians, and you just sitting in the stands just watching like, wow. Wow. You never get nothing. How can you explain it, Chief Biko? That's that's that, that's how I, that that's the best way I could put it. That. I mean, I think you just laid it, put it in layman's terms, dog. Like real talk, just straight up the middle with it. Just straight up the middle with it. We reading a instruction manual, looking for our part in that manual, and it's not there. And Yet here's again. the killer part. Uh, here's the killer part, bro. You're not in the circuit because this law comes from Europe. The kings and queens in England gave the peasants the operating manual to take around the world. They understand they're the subjects of their kings and queens that exiled them from their land. You have confederacies. You need to read the Iroquois Confederacy Constitution so you can see the difference in the way that we're supposed to be operating and the way that the European subject that came over here operates. There was no penal system on this land before them. That's foreign government. So this is why you're not a component in the circuit. It's not your government. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, did, I just wanted to throw that in because that tab had opened up in my mind. I, I, no. That's the best way I could try to explain why we're not a part of it because this shit came from a foreign land with a monarchy type rulership. Correct. Correct. And the only reason why, at least for me, would ask any congressman or congresswoman to have us written into this law is for them to tell us we can't. We already know we aren't part of the system. We can't be a part of the system. I mean, we've been explaining it all, but for the majority, if they're unwilling to even write you and define you in law, that should be, that should be it. There should be no more faith into this system if they're unwilling to even define who you are within their system again we know they're not going to do it so that's the answer we just are trying to get them to make publicly yeah no announce that in public for all of the quote-unquote african-americans blacks whatever to hear because we try to tell them i mean shit it's just in one ear out the other but no if you tell them media if you tell them white man if you tell them congressman congresswoman then maybe the alarm will go off and i think that's it's too much proof man uh but you're exactly right that's what we're doing we already know 
they're not gonna then I don't okay. Well, you already done. We know they're not gonna do it. It's been 247 years. You ain't I mean, they- <laughs> so all we basically do it is let's get this shit over with. Let's yeah. get the- rip the band-aid off, bro. Stop trying to put the damn neosporin back on. <laughs> ain't nothing healing. Stop it. Just rip the band-aid off so we can okay. Now we all know where we stand. Right. Right. What we're saying is go ahead and just let us know at your mind, because that's the only way it seems like we're going to fight. You got to tell us you don't give a damn, and then we can in turn say we don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. But you're absolutely correct. We, we, we've we read the documents. Shout out to everybody that's been rocking with us and following along. We ain't guessing. Now it's just time to just say it. Just say it with your chest. Just, just go ahead and just tell us, damn, yeah. We've never defined nothing that we call you. There you go, right there. We've never put in writing nothing we call you. Yeah, we called you colored at the state level or even through the vital statistics department, but actually coming through Congress? Oh no, we would never define what Negro is or what color is. We need you to say that shit so we can stop walking around like we a part of some shit. We ain't a part of the circuit. Hello, are y'all with me? Hello, in the chat, are y'all with me? We we debris caught up in the we debris caught up in the engine, thinking we meant to be there, but we not. Like, mm-mm. yeah. See, here's they, the beauty. Of, here's the beauty of this checkmate, Chief Biko. Mm. No matter what they do, it proves the point. Because if they remain silent and don't respond, that's telling you something, man. And then Correct. if they act write something on paper and introduce it into the house and it doesn't get past the house or past the senate that's telling you something as well right correct correct so either way it's a win-win the whole uh, the whole point is the gig is up we done cracked the code around this bitch Mm -hmm. shout out to dr carter g woodson that says self-education is more powerful than being schooled and told what to know Mm -hmm. Let's finish this. All right. You know, although. Mm, okay. Although the court ruled in September, the FBI delayed release until a week ago Thursday. In the last week of the congressional session, and on the same day that Gerald Ford was sworn in as vice president, the Bureau apparently hoped to avoid congressional inquiry and to have the news lost in the flood of copy about the Ford oath. On both counts for the time being, the Bureau can be credited with the meticulous planning and successful implementation. This is what they did on the affirmative action, and this is what they did on Tulsa. Notice they said that a week ago Thursday, in the last week of the congressional session, and on the same day that Gerald Ford was sworn in as vice president, you got big big activity going on. The Bureau apparently hoped to avoid congressional inquiry and to have the news lost in the flood of copy about the Ford Oath. They dropped the affirmative action right before July 4th. They they always snatch something from you right before a big event. So we're talking about baseball, football, basketball, major holidays is when they hit you. And keep in mind now, you just coming off your slave holiday, Juneteenth, and they've been hitting you pretty much July 19th, which was this week. Within a 30-day period, they've been busting your ass. Affirmative action, gone. Tulsa, gone. State of Florida done stood up and said, we finna tell them that slavery was a good thing. Now, if that ain't denial, not only are you not willing to deal with what happened in Florida, you're then going to turn around and say, well, that was actually good for you that you was in handcuffs and getting three hots in the cot. That was it. I can see some benefits from that. You got your win right and you was able to start. See, you couldn't do a thousand pushups before we incarcerated. <laughs> so it came out of that, right? You know, you may have even become homosexual. So now you can be a part of the LGBT community. No, see, mas. Just, no, mas. <laughs> man. Now you. Mm mm. Yeah, you could say that. Then you could say all of the stuff. Well, your incarceration led you to have a skill. Now you can work on, you know, vehicles. You couldn't do that before. Like, man. 
It's too much truth right there. Too much truth. And again, that's the final stage of genocide. Denial. Denial, bro. I know we planted drugs on you in 1994, but look at you now. Mm-hmm. Look at the bright side. Pounds. You would have never been able to bench press a thousand pounds had we not put you in there. Never mind, we planted fake drugs on you, but look at you now. You can mm-hmm. read. You actually graduated and got your GED while you were in prison. Mm-hmm. This is what they're telling you in the state of Florida. We're not going to tell you about the similar wars, but we'll tell you about working under the quartermasters on those military work camps. You know, you know those fingernails that you broke off? That could have been a good thing, right? Because you couldn't scratch your wife at home, right? See, there were some positive things that came out of, you know, you working on military work camps from sunup to sundown. Hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we could end right there. I mean, the chat vibing with us, they, they all in agreement, man. I mean, if we're going to play dumb, let's play dumb, right? Let's go ahead and just <laughs> let's, 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 let's. Mm-hmm. go from here. I mean, well, like if you can that, uh, dro- drop in a jar of pickles in the kitchen and you come in there and there's pickle juice everywhere. And then your kids say, I didn't drop the pickle jar. See, it's actually a benefit that I, that, 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 mm-hmm. that sm- yeah, that pickle smell. See, we couldn't get that smell no other kind of way, dad. <laughs> now we don't have to worry about the roaches. <laughs> that's going to be like, what? <laughs> and again, that's just any old kind of stuff that they can feed us in. Well, I guess we did learn. And, and if you have to guess, not anybody on the chat, but folks that have to guess, well, I guess we did learn some skills. I mean, we had the uh, the uh, the cotton gin and not like, bro, if you have to, you was all the way lost. You was all the way lost. But man. You know, I asked your son, hey, man, did you take my car last? Uh, did you take my car? No, I ain't take the car. Did you go out there and put your hood, put your hand on the hood and you feel the warmth from it? And then he come back and say, well, you just said you got the oil change yesterday. So see, it was a good thing that I took the car because we needed to get the cylinders and the pistons lubricated. So, you know, I just had to drive it around for a while because you said you needed the cars balanced and uh, the tires balanced and the rotors change, right? So yeah, I needed to help with that. That's what they're doing with this with this Florida education system. It's a yeah. good yeah. thing that we fucked you over in a way when you think about it, right? Right. <laughs> Mm-mm. and then again just switch it up as if we ain't teach them how to do everything on this land <laughs> it's, it was a good thing Mm-mm-mm. it's so many lies at this point that we're, I, I have fun with this because the lies like I, it just shows that we're two different groups of people man I would have got the taste slapped out my mouth with the with the with with the with the bold faced lies that we're watching as adults take place when it comes to the damage and the repair that needs to be done. And the fact that we let these people sit up here and just lie to us like this, man, and run with it. It's like, it's like once you get grounded in what really happened when you watch TV, it's like you look at these people and it's like, you niggas are crazy. Literally, we used to say, shout out. Niggas is literally shot the fuck out. You a grown ass lion and you walking around thinking you a koala bear. That's what we doing in society when we say we black people. Everybody on planet earth know we a lion. But we walk around talking about I'm a, I'm a koala bear. And then they switch that shit up. So we go, we run with koala bear for about 10 years. We even start making our hair look like koala bears. Then we turn around and we say, nah, fuck that. I'm a panther. And then they let us run with that for a minute. Then we turn around and I'm an alligator. And everybody on planet Earth know, damn, they a lion. You a whole German shepherd walking around talking about you a British bulldog. That's what we are as a group of people. Sick as hell, bro. Inside out, backwards, and upside down. <laughs> and yeah, like people say in the chat, man, they, I mean... They're doing it for a reason. They're just trying to see if we're going to do anything. If, if, our, if our people are going to react or if it's still just going to be, you know, status quo. And again, they're going to get more bold with it. Hence the damn try that in my small town song. Hence the affirmative action. Hence the throwing out the whole 
Tulsa massacre case. They just going to continue to get more bold until as a collective, we just decide to say, you know, what did you, what you, what you say? Uh, you don't give a damn. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> Shout out to Lil John. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you don't give a damn. We don't give a fuck. Basically. Uh, yeah. We a special group of people, man. Um, and here's the irony of it. We're gremlins. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Gremlins. I'm, I'm, I'm showing my age. We refuse to use the word American. American is like eating after 12 o'clock, right? That's who you are. We will be black, we'll be colored, we'll be Negro, we'll be Afro-American, we'll be a minority. But we've been so mentally brainwashed that if you hold a mirror in our face and say, you the American, we will not just call ourselves the American at this point we we won't it's like it's like pouring water on us like gizmo that's crazy we will not use the word american that goes for dr umar johnson that goes for all pan africanists ask them can you just talk about us and and, and use the word american when you're describing us in your segment, they can't do it. We are lions that insist on being koala bears. Ask Jabari, ask all them niggas on Sinetta TV channel, can you talk about the group of people that went through the civil rights era and just call them the American? And that's like pouring water on these. Man, things. start glitching. <laughs> start glitching if you try to, they try to do that, man. Mm -mm. I'm serious. Any of them. Uh, who the dude that's supposed to be running for president, Carnell West, all these scholars, just ask them a simple question. Why can't you just give us a segment where you call us the American? We're the only people that never went through immigration per the U.S. government. We're the only people that's never been defined by Congress. Clearly, we're attached to the land because everything that birthed out of us, everybody exploits it. Music, sports, entertainment, comedy. Shout out to Red Fox. Shout out to Richard Pryor. Shout out to Eddie Murphy. So I guess all them Africans too, right? <laughs> you, you, you see the problem. So Red Fox is an African. That what y'all trying to tell us now. Red Fox was a Dolomite was an African. You niggas crazy. Close us out, Chief Biko. I mean, great, great bill. I see we stopping off on page 21. Definitely shout out to everybody in the in the chat, man. Sha one. Original Copper Empress, Miss Lita. Uh, I believe it's Raining Mike, KK, War 861, Epic Studies, John A. Uh, let me see, Von Von, Yunka 725, Mr. C, Karen Williams, Mac Don, uh, Margell Stewart, Tay Bay, Original Skywalker. Definitely shout out to everybody if I miss anybody. Kahi, appreciate the gym with the. Uh, the Philadelphia Bombings, Legend of Naga. Definitely shout out to everybody, man, uh, for rocking with us. Uh, We're going to continue to read this through this document. And let's just see what uh, happens, you know, this coming week. It seems like everything we're reading is, you know, falling right into, you know, the mainstream news is in regards to something that we kind of went over, whether it's, you know, the 1968 Civil Rights Acts, uh, pretty much anything that we done went over. So, Again, um, for those who are willing, you know, not stressing anybody to do it, we'll continue to do it. And for those on the um, on the panel, as far as emailing these, you know, quote unquote representatives, even though they don't represent us, because again, who is black? What is that? Um, but again, just continue to ask them the questions, because again, I think we just need to, and not anybody on the chat or panel, but the majority just need to hear it from the horse's mouth. We can't write you in the law, we won't. And then and we'll have our do, answer. Go ahead. You can do it with Chief Biko. Close us out with the Ice Cube song again. Gotcha. Um, from a historical standpoint, uh, 
contrary to belief, a lot of people were not listening to rap music in 1994, which is the year that this song he's about to play. Shout out to the Lethal Injection album that Ice Cube made. He was the first one to put pen to paper and actually create what we know now as gangster rap. It was reality rap back when I was in high school and coming up. So we want to close out on this. That's for the youth that a lot of, a lot of the, I know you, Chief Biko, you were born in the 90s. So I want to give you an idea of what we were listening to in the 90s when we was in high school so you can understand we were groomed like this. I'm not up here on this channel by coincidence. Ice Cube raised me. Scarface raised me. Airbnb and Rakim raised me. LL Cool J raised me. Public Enemy raised me. X-Clan raised me. Poison Clan raised me. Luke Skywalker raised me. Young black men, if I'm going to use that word back then, that was spitting conscious, giving us game. Here we are 30 years later doing the same thing. Come on with it. How you like me now? I'm in the mix. It's 1986 and I got the fix with a chicken and a quota. Got the bacon soda, let the water boil. Workers all loyal. Dropped out to 12 cause my wealth is shorter than a midget on his knees. Now I slang keys and fess my hood with crack cause I'm the Mac. Take a nation of millions to hold me back. Too big for my britches and I got bitches. Now I'm hitting switches. Niggas want my riches. Used to get 18 when my G was alive. Now a key is 13. Another summer, police ain't get no dumber. Streets dried up, used to think it would last, but being a kingpin is a thing of the past. They tried to blast me by selling a boulder. Now I got my ass in Minnesota. Got my own crew, it's on brand new. Damn, what can I do today? So now I can kick it, now I got ends Waving to my friends, rolling in my pants Going to see the twins, play at the dome Police saw tapping my mobile phone I'm almost home, getting excited, indicted Spent the grip in the year trying to fight it Lawyer got paid, plead, no contest And everything I own got repossessed Now take a look at the ducks And I'm happy cause I only got 36 months Never picked up a book my arms are 16 inches, niggas, look, can't wait for 92 so I can get with my crew and see what can I do today. In LA and I'm bellin' in the dough Everybody know I gotta start from scratch So where the work at, a nigga smirk at Me saying ain't nothing poppin' from here to the LB What you tell me? No, it ain't crackin', everybody's jackin' for a coup Cause they sent in the troops Even though I got muscle, that ain't my hustle <laughs> Take a nigga shit in a tussle No skills to pay the bills Talkin' about education To battle inflation, no college degree Just a dumbass G yeah, you nigga I got a baby on the way, damn it's a mess Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Yes Took some advice from my Uncle Festa All dressed up in polyester Welcome to McDonald's, may I please help you? Shit, what can I do today? Look and see if this motherfucker's guilty for the laws he'll put you in jail for. 